it's hard. You take a company to one, two, three million dollar easy. But in order to take it to the next level, you really need to bring in people. You need help. I don't want to give them like a, a, a brush off answer because we were there, yeah. you know, we were 10, we were 15, like we were all packed in this parking lot, right? And as we were living, this little boy, he was like, his mom was like, yeah, did you enjoy it? He was like walking around looking at all the cars, just taking pictures. And then the kid was like, this is the best day of my life, right? And, and you see that and you're like, wow, like I was that, you know, I was that. So. The point is we don't want to give people like a, but it's such a short period and you can't really be like, it's such a loaded question. Like what do you do for a living? It's such a loaded question, right? But I, I can kind of see what they want to do. They're trying to understand like how can they achieve, I guess the same financial success, right? And the whole idea of my measure hack is that you can, you can, but you can't really answer it in like five or 10 minutes. You know, you can't even, you certainly cannot answer it in like one or two minutes. Right, so that was really the struggle. So I was like, okay, maybe it's really three parts, right? So measure and hack, at least for the for like the lessons, like the for cash management for CEOs and all these stuff, those are for entrepreneurs that already have a business. Okay, they already have a million dollar, two million dollar, three, four, five million dollar. That's going at it, right? But from an entrepreneur to level up to a CEO, they really need the systems and tools and financial literacy to do that. Yeah. So then I was like, okay, cool. Maybe measure and hacks branding is then, well, system tools and financial literacy for that CEO life, right? Because I remember my mentor, Michael Cato telling me one time, and you can watch it on his presentation. He goes, he needs to, he called it entrepreneurial CEO because entrepreneurs, you almost have, it's almost like you have that hustle, you have that grit, you know, you have an idea and you work hard, right? And then you take it to a certain level, one, two, three, four, five million dollars. And in fact, in the last week, I've seen, I have all these new, you know, prospects that came to me and I'm looking at it, people that's got like five, six, seven million dollars in revenue, who's turning like 20, 30 thousand dollars in profit. And that sucks, right? Can you imagine you do all these work, you create all these revenue and then you keep nothing. And that's because it's hard. You take a company to one, two, three million dollar easy. But in order to take it to the next level, you really need to bring in people. You need help, right? Like what you were saying, you need help. And then sure, in the beginning, you might have one buddy, two buddy, one employee, two employee, and then it's still kind of work. You're still kind of gritty. You're still kind of working together. But when you get to five, 10, 15, when you, that scale gets up, you now need a system. You now need processes. Right? You now need financial literacy. You need to understand your numbers. You need to understand your financials to put it together. So then my, I'm thinking measure and hack, at least at this, at this end of the things is really, or, or even deep sky, if you will, is really transforming entrepreneurs into CEOs, right? Or transforming entrepreneurs into what my mentor, Michael Kittle calls entrepreneurial CEO. The process. The process, mm -hmm. the systems, the tools, right? And the knowledge the knowledge be able to manage that process, right? But then even before then, what you were talking about, right? Before you even become an entrepreneur, before you even have a business worth one, two, three, four, five million dollars, right? Then maybe that's what those sort of things, they, they don't need the consulting. They don't need, you know, the financial management course that's going to cost them $1,600. But these bite-sized tips, you know, may, may, may help them out. So at least they get an edge, they get a head start. They understand like, okay, well, I gotta be careful here. I gotta be, be careful there. I don't know, but I think we will slowly move towards that, right? But right now, I think that's focused on the back end because we can't, because we started at the super high level consulting and then now we're slowly moving, you know, to help people from a, you know, self-consumable and all that. But I think for Instagram and all that other stuff, it will still be helpful just having these knowledge because I think at the end of the day, everybody needs that financial knowledge. Yeah. You know? For sure. Yeah. It's not even a revenue thing, right? Because I remember even when I was just doing like half a million dollar in revenue, that was netting like 50,000. So theoretically, in my $500,000 revenue company was in a way, quote unquote, better than the $5 million company because the $5 million was turning 12, 15,000 and half a million, 
I'm already turning 50,000, right? So I'm doing less work, I'm having less headache, I'm having less overhead, but I'm having more profit. So I think, I don't know, I think financial literacy is such an important part. And to go back to that conversation, people come up to me and say, hey, what do you do for a living, right? I think, I think my best answer right now is like, oh, well, I teach entrepreneurs and I teach CEOs about, you know, money management, about money, right? Because growing up, nobody teaches that. Mm-hmm. You know, they teach us hustle, they teach us, you know, making a revenue, but how do we keep a buck? And it sucks when you have these different companies that do five, ten million dollars and just nothing. Just yesterday, this company that did 50, 54 million dollar GMV, okay, they sell on Amazon. And then out of those, they got eight million in revenue. And then from the eight million in revenue, I think they turned like a hundred thousand in net profit. And you're just like, where did the money go? Yeah. <laughs> Right. But if you look into their financials and you kind of move things around and check it out, you'll be able to find these spots, these pockets of just like, again, that 1% change and it will completely turn things around. Yeah. Right. And imagine if, if we just grow that 100,000 to two, three, four, 500,000, now you have more money to kind of shift things around. Then, then we can get out of work, you know, because at the end of the day, the whole measure and hack idea is to live the good life, right? To live the dream, right? And the dream isn't about the work. Right, the work is just a means and an end to help us live the dream. Even the company's dream, like whatever your company's dream is, whether it is to help people become more fit, whether it is to help people promote themselves through their, you know, marketing, or if it's you know to help people understand their financial literacy. If we don't have to worry about money and profit, then it gives us more time and mind space to work on our mission.